In this video, we want to introduce the concept of variable length argument lists. These are argument lists that do not have a specified length, as the name implies. So where do these come up? You've actually been using them a fair bit already. I don't know if you've wondered about this, but when you called list 1, 2, 3, you made a list with three values. But you didn't have to make three. You can pass in more things. And this is just a function call except it can take however many things you want. We just saw it in the previous video, taking zero arguments. So how did they make the function do that? Well, that's what we want to learn. We want to know how to write our own functions that can take a variable number of arguments. And the way that you do this is when you create your function, we're going to make an average function you pass in your values and I was going to pass them in one at a time so average without variable length argument list could be written as I missed a colon there in three double and then it would average three values we couldn't pass in one or two or four we'd have to pass in exactly three what we can do with the var args and that is a short name that is often given to the variable length argument list, is the last argument in the list. You can't do this for, for any of them other than the last one. So I could have some other arguments before this, but only the last one can have a little star here. And this star says that we can have zero or more of these values in. And I want to return a double and just to see this work, we'll make it return zero to start with. And then I can call average. I can pass it nothing. I can pass it one. I can pass it one and two, one and two and three, and it works. Okay, so that's the whole idea behind the variable length argument list. Now the question is in the case of average, how do we actually work with it? Well, it turns out that you can treat this argument in just like you would an array or a list. And it has all of the methods that you would expect there from a subtyping perspective. It turns out that we can treat it as a sequence. And if this were just an array, what would we want to do? Well, we'd say something like n dot sum divided by n dot length. Except I put in an s instead of an n. n dot length, okay. And then I could call average on two, three, four and get back a three. Now that isn't a very full implementation of it because what happens if I call average there, then I get this thing called nan, not a number, uh, which really isn't what I want. We probably need a more elaborate implementation of this. If n dot length is greater than zero, then we return what we had, n dot sum divided by n dot length, else, we're going to return zero. And now if we call average with no arguments, we get zero, one argument, two arguments, however many arguments we want, this version of average will work for it. So that's the variable length argument list. Now, you kind of could have written an average like this before if we had, we could have had like an average of a list which took a list of doubles and returned a double. And it would do basically, well, yeah, this exact same thing. Of course, when we called it, we'd have to say average list and pass it a list of one, two, three, instead of just saying one, two, three. So it's a bit more verbose. However, a lot of times you might have your values in a list. So val nums is a list of 98, 95, 90, 94. So those are the numbers that I have and I want to average them. Well, of course, if I have my average list function, I could just use that. But what if I want to call it with just the average function? In some ways it makes sense that I should somehow be able to pass in this uh, list into average. But turns out that if we try that directly, it says no. Oh, and 
let's make put in a point oh here so that we have that okay so it found a list of double and it requires a double well there's a kind of a special syntax for doing this in Scala because it turns out there are situations where you want to do this so they added something to the syntax for it we need to specify that this nums should be interpreted as a type with a star and the syntax for this is we start off with a colon and of course every place you've seen the colon in Scala the colon is used to separate a name from its type so what we're doing here is we're saying nums is of a particular type. We want to have it interpreted it as, a, as a certain type. We use an underscore to say it's kind of we don't care what but it should be interpreted as something star. It turns out you can't say double star. We have to say this underscore star and then it works. Okay, So here are little three characters here. When you want to pass in an array or a list or some other sequence into a place where it takes variable length arguments, you put this whole colon underscore star and that tells it to interpret it in that manner.